Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is a Quadro FX 3700 graphics card. The Quadro series from Nvidia targets workstation users and each one often has a similar mainstream GeForce counterpart like this one for example being based on the G92 architecture which also features in the GeForce 8800 series. The thing is this card costs $1600 new compared to the $349 price tag attached to the 8800 which launched the previous year. But why? Well, often Quadro cards are purchased by those with a focus for design, as well as large corporations who benefit from the different drivers that focus more on 3D productivity applications. Does this constitute a huge price hike? Probably not, but Nvidia know people will pay it. A lot more care and attention seemingly goes into Quadro production too, with Nvidia themselves at the helm of quality control. Does that constitute the higher price? Probably not. But if Nvidia, same as AMD with their Radeon and Fire Pro cards, can make more money, at least that means they can invest more into developing mainstream cards for those of us with smaller budgets. Or so you would hope. Anyway, back to this Quadro card, and I've got to be honest, I'm no expert when it comes to 3D design. The only thing I can design is a well-structured sandwich, but that doesn't matter, because older Quadro cards can now be found so cheap that they may be worth picking up. This 3700 cost me £20, roughly $25, an absolute steal and 193% saving over the original RRP 9 years ago. That means that this thing has lost $175 of value per year year since it launched, going by the price I paid of course. Granted it won't support the latest games, but it's just one of many examples of Quadro cards that are now very cheap on the used market. So let's take a look around it. First thing you'll see is that it doesn't support SLI like its mainstream counterpart, and that it's a single slot solution which, combined with the silver paint job, makes it look very sleek. Connection wise there are two DVI ports and an S video out. Internally the card is clocked at 500 MHz with 512 megabytes of GDDR3 RAM and 112 CUDA cores. Power consumption wise you're looking at just under 200 watts at idle and over 250 under full load. So a 450 watt PSU should be plenty. So can this card, not designed for gaming, play any games, and would it make a nice addition to a DX10 based budget build? Well let's find out. I'll be putting a selection of popular titles that still support DX10 or lower to the test, to see how our Quadro card does. At the time of its release, it could have definitely been used for this purpose, it just wouldn't have been worth it at all for the price. So jumping into a few titles and I was immediately surprised at the Call of Duty 4 performance with the high settings. 45 FPS was the recorded average here on this demanding level that features a lot going on on the screen at once. The Quadro card held firm here and never dipped below 30 FPS although if you wanted closer to 60, which would be ideal for multiplayer, then the low settings or a lower resolution might be better for you. The game was also set to 1080p. I then tried a pretty fun Call of Juarez game I didn't know I had, and that ran pretty well at 32 frames per second at 1080p. The settings were on low here, but performance was actually the same on both medium and high as well, which was likely because the in-game settings only adjusted a few things, none of which affected performance on this pretty easy to run game that much. A resolution change also made no real difference. Fallout 3 also ran well with the high settings with AA and AF off from the launcher. This was also at 1080p and with 50 frames per second it was hard to complain. In busier areas expect a slight drop but nothing that will affect your overall gameplay experience. I saw temperatures of up to 70 degrees with this card but it stayed pretty quiet more so than my 1060 under load which can be quite audible. Another fun game that runs on older hardware is Cuphead. At 1080p resolution the game managed to maintain a solid 60fps most of the time which isn't hard to do with this game but it's nice to see it running smoothly on the Quadro card. So let's move on to something a little more demanding that should test our GPU to its limits and that game is Battlefield 3. At 1360x768 with the low settings, the game averaged 36 FPS. At 1080p it ran with about 25, and turning up the settings, even at this low resolution, saw constant dips below 30. Battlefield actually supports 640x480, and it would run very nicely at that resolution, but it wouldn't look very nice, put it that way. 
Finally, I tested Skyrim. Ignore the frame rate here because I actually recorded with MSI Afterburner today, and while it had no effect on the other games, it knocked a few numbers off of the Skyrim result, which actually averaged out at 55 frames per second over one hour of gameplay. Overall, I'd like to repeat something I heard a guy over on a channel by the name of Socket Sanctuary say. There are no bad graphics cards, only bad prices. I think that phrase suits this Quadro card very well, because the money I paid for it, I could run my older games collection on it just fine. Just don't go out of your way to buy a Quadro card in a world of used mainstream GeForce and Radeon options, unless you want a cheap workstation setup. Do you guys think I should add some 3D design applications to any future Quadro and Fire Pro GPU videos? Let me know down below as well as leaving a like or dislike depending on how you enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope to see you all in the next one.